We're live, baby. Welcome to the Music Period Podcast. First episode. Show. First ever episode. Where we review music. We're going to talk about some albums. And we give you the right opinion. Yeah. Controversial to say, I know, but that's... No, what we say goes. <laughs> you wouldn't be listening if that weren't the case. <laughs> um, I don't know. Some of you may know us from before. From that other place. The before times. Yep, the before times. Before the world caught fire. Yep. It's going to be a little bit of a different tone. We're going to be very serious on this Very one. professional. Very professional. There's no jokes? Nope. No fun? Mm-mm. Nothing about dicks <laughs> at all. Well, I Except for today. <laughs> and, well, you had to, I had to get it out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> What's our first album, Sam? First album we're going to review is by a rapper... By the way, that's Sam. I'm Dave. Yes. Yeah. If you don't know, yeah. by the sound of my I mean, annoying voice. Clearly they know clearly who Clearly they know. Yeah. This week we're going to do a new album by Megan the Stallion. Burr, 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 burr. Enter all ye, hear ye, hear ye. Why is it the? I don't know. You know what? To me, she's Megan the Stallion. Yeah. Yep. I feel like it's a little... Uh, Pretentious. Like, yeah. That's what I was going to say. Megan the Stallion. It's like you're the only one because the kind of implies like singular. Actually, she's not even the stallion. There's like it's right. pretty disrespectful to actual stallions. I mean, there are some very, very pretty show horses out there. Mm. Black Beauty. Yo. Classic. Hell yeah. I mean, maybe that's what it is. She's a black beauty. Could be, you know. But also, there's plenty of them. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, she's not the. It's just she's, real weird to say she's the. Megan a stallion. Yeah, Megan the horse. Make a, whoa, <laughs> hey now, hey now. Okay, <laughs> so yeah, her new album "Good News" <clears throat> came out on "Good News," more like "Bad News." Friday the twentieth should have been a week earlier. Friday the thirteenth. Ooh, if you yes. ask me, Halloween. Boy, that's corny. Could have been a uh, April Fool's Day album too. <sighs> Boy. I don't know if you're picking up what I'm putting down. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, it seems like you did. You, you know, I got to be honest with you. This is our first episode. And yep. I hope people enjoy it. But I hated this album, The End. Yeah, I know. It was very hard to sit down and give this thing a proper listen to. I wanted to like it. I did too. I 100% went into this going, you know what? I didn't like Sugar as much as you did. Right. But I still had hope that at least maybe the production would be you know at least some bangers right at least some like all some right, party tunes, all right here dude. we go you know and like that's all i was really looking for out of this was yeah. i i listened so to just be frank uh i did not know anything about this person i, I had never heard anything i about hadn't her heard until that. we decided we were gonna do her album. Right. right i'd never heard that song wop nope um so I went back and I listened to that album that you sent me, Suga. Can you imagine that there's a percentage of people right there? You've never heard WAP. I know, but they're looking down at me. <laughs> oh, you've never heard WAP, you yeah. uneducated fuck. So you know nothing about Megan A. You Stallion. call yourself a music fan, you've never heard WAP. WAP? What does WAP stand for? Uh, I think it's a slang term for Ira- uh, Italian people. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think you may be right. <laughs> <laughs> it's a real weird thing to sing a song about. That's fine, though. Um, so, yeah, both of us, we, we didn't know much about her. Yeah. Um, she's she's attractive. Yep. She's young. How old is she? 25. Oh, wow. That makes me feel bad about who I am and what I've done with my life. Yeah, exactly. Like, one thing I'd like to get across before we even really dig into this show is that no matter what I say about any album or any artist or anything like that, the fact that they're doing it, yeah, immediately I have respect for that. Absolutely. Immediately. This is just me giving my opinion, which comes from a very educated place. And I'm not going to say it's yeah. the only way you should think, but I'd consider it. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'd heavily consider it. So, so you're an actual musician. Yeah. And I'm just a fan yeah well you're an actual fan like I'm you an listen actual fan you yes. have an open ear when you listen to new stuff i send you things all the time and you give it a shot absolutely there's Anything. a lot of people that don't yeah oh, i'm pulling out the absolutely absolutely <laughs> absolutely oh it's like riding a stupid bike yeah <clears throat> excuse me well yeah, yeah i uh so you know i got into sugar i listened to it on my my flight last week and yeah. i'll be honest I enjoyed it more than I thought I was going to. I did not like it. 
and we have i feel like we kind of like it and don't like it for similar reasons yeah you know what i mean like the reason that i like it is because it's kind of mindless <laughs> okay and it's yeah. kind of just like one lane the whole time and yeah. she's not trying to be something else other than the thing that she is and the thing that she talks about which is a sexual like icon for whatever industry i sure. guess yeah. but like i had fun with it okay when I, when i hear i i'm like very particular about hip hop that i listen to and it's either pretty much got to be like slam poetry yeah. with like kind of jazzy instrumentals behind it mm -hmm. or fucking Just stupid like straight bangers. up banger stupid i call it uh bravado rap yeah i i, I kind of dig when a rapper you know i don't mind it when they get a little cocky yep like Co kanye yep when he's on man his bravado rap is fantastic absolutely but uh, kanye is a little different because i mean he just he reinvents himself every time yeah but for some reason the bravado rap of megan the stallion i guess kind of bugs me in a way haven't earned it yet it's not even really that it's sorry i'm gonna go off on a little tangent yeah here. go for it i just feel like she's playing a fucking character like there's nothing real right going on here you know i bet she is the sweetest person yep but what she conveys through her rapping i just i have no issues with anybody who wants to talk about anything i really don't like, yeah not, none of that is concerning just do it in a way that is shows you have talent yeah you know or like at least you care yeah. about the work that you're putting into right. it which is the key thing that I hated yeah. about bad news. Good. <laughs> it's just bad <laughs> news now. It's just bad news, dude. Yeah. It's it, like you, you said it off air. You said it was rushed. Yeah. You, what did you say? You thought maybe they were capitalized. She was trying to capitalize off a of WAP. It's a money that was game. Just such a big Money song. grab. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, Sugar was from earlier this year. Yeah, it was. Two albums in a year is kind of Yeah. What's much. the difference? Why is an EP an EP? I know it's... <laughs> EP is an extended play. LP is a long play. Yeah. So it's just the amount of songs. On it, the yeah. Thing. I mean, but there's no like you could do a eight track EP and yeah. then the next band could put out a 10 track album. Yeah. So the last fucking five Kanye albums have been EPs. Yeah, pretty much, man. <laughs> and yeah. this one should have been a, maybe a single. 17 songs. With a B-side. Yeah. There are 17 songs 17. on this fucking piece of garbage. It's just not good. And it's not all bad, but it's so overwhelmingly bad that yeah. the other stuff just doesn't really matter. Nope. So, <clears throat> yeah, I don't know, man. Do you want to go through this thing with like well, some highlights from your listen? Or I mean, sure. Uh, we can start on the first song. Uh, what's, what's the first song called? Shots Fired. <laughs> Shots Fired. So Shots Fired comes on. It's a borrowed beat. Uh, I couldn't exactly place it right away where that beat was. Um, but it's definitely borrowed. Mm -hmm. It had a little remember like Juice World song that borrowed um, that Biggie beat. Yeah, this one this one's borrowed from somewhere. I didn't give it enough listens to to place it. I feel like borrowed's a a relatively polite way to put it. I feel like it's very <laughs> derivative. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's I felt like the but the problem is it's like the store brand version of the one you've heard before. It's yeah. cheap. Yes. It's thin. Yes. The production on this thing. If you're gonna go for fucking bangers and you're gonna write songs about fucking and sucking and smoking and all that fucking just like going goofy shit, yeah, make it big. Get a good producer. Right. Do it right. Yeah. And this thing's thin. This song specifically jumped out as cheap yeah. to me. Yeah. And it's just. It felt like there were like a thousand different lanes that she was trying to jam into it for Dude. her lyrical content, and she and then none of them went together. Right off the bat, right off the bat, she's talking about, you know, uh, she sounds like a thirteen-year-old virgin. Yeah, she's you know that kid that you went to middle school with, and yeah. he would like yeah. after summertime, I, he was like, I had sex a hundred uh, times this yeah, summer. I had all all the sex you haven't fucked a pussy yet <laughs> i had so much sex this yeah. summer i think my dick fell off yeah, and she's and she's just like i i i, I had all, all the dicks she I sounds like all the big dicks. the female equivalent of yeah, that it does it's just it doesn't like i get that there's some kind of empowerment surrounding this yeah. woman i get it right but i challenge the people who look at her as a um 
as a as a symbol of empowerment, and it's okay if you do. Yep. Go listen to Little Kim. Yeah. Go listen to Foxy Brown. And I'll be the first to say, I wish we had a modern Little Kim. Yeah. You know we what don't. I mean? We don't. No. There's a lot of people that are trying to be that. Right. But none of them are hitting it. No. And <clears throat> like I said, I enjoyed that aspect of the first album. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying that if that's what somebody does, even on a cheap scale or a like a store brand version of it, right. I can still have fun with it. Right. But this one, especially this song, it was just pandering to every yeah. single person that could potentially be an audience member that it just cheapened the whole thing how in one line are you gonna go i need a man with a big dick uh i want him to buy me things and then you squeeze in this line that says it's 2020 and we still don't have any justice for brianna taylor and then you immediately talk about how there's there's pussy men who are trying to get you right that makes yes no fucking sense to all me. three of those things are their own subject matter and yeah. none of them relate to each other like look i get it you want a guy with a big dick right don't come don't my we way. all a boy can dream <laughs> yeah exactly but why would you squeeze that brianna taylor line in there it's only so you can say you fucking did yep and that's pe- it and the crazy thing is people will pick that one yep. part out and go she deserves a fucking wow. the nobel peace prize yes because exactly. she talked about it but you listen to this it, it had no no depth i mean look that conversation is welcome anywhere in yeah. my world uh-huh. but don't bookend it with you cheapen it yeah you're fucking cheapening the message yeah and like yeah she goes from you know in the same verse talking about how like she makes guys work for it and then by the end of the verse she's talking about giving it up pretty easily to anybody yeah. that's got a big dick. Yep. So, I mean, like I said, you can have your opinion about either of those things and do either of those things. And that's cool, but you can't contradict yourself in your own, in one verse on exactly. a song. Yeah. And that's how you start the album. It's, it's, it's your jumbled. You're too jumbled up. This is how like, you're introducing what, us to your album. Exactly. What is your writing process? Ugh. What are you doing? Rushed. Yeah. Absolutely rushed. Right. Just cheap, rushed, Fuck, it felt like, you know, it felt like she got dumped by her label and she signed with the first person that was like, yeah. I could do an album for you. Right. And he has like a Casio keyboard and a, a pair of headphones. Yeah. It's like she got, so she got discovered, I believe, on Instagram or YouTube. She was doing ciphers or whatever. So she was actually rhyming. Yeah. And now she, you know, she's doing songs with Cardi B and, I, you know, whatever. She's kind of blown up a little bit. Yep. That Savage song. She's like a TikTok. Catchy ass song. Yeah. And that's what this whole album is. She's trying to make new TikToks. Yeah. But it's like nursery rhymes for fucking 25 year old (laughs) people who want to go to the club. Right. Also, the white skinny girls can dance to this. Right. You know, Stallion. And they're like, I'm an ally. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, yeah. Yeah. You know, it's ridiculous. I just I don't. Fuck! I had a I had a direction I was going with that. Oh, it you seems sound like, like a fucking it seems Megan like Stallion. This is <laughs> exactly. I feel like she. This is her first music after being discovered on Instagram. Like someone yeah. was like, "Hey, right. I, I can help you make music." I bet you you could rap. Go, yeah, <laughs> and she just goes into a studio and like has no control over it and is just. Or she had all the control over it and no <sighs> one said no. Yeah, which maybe I'd almost respect that more. Yeah, I mean, there's an aspect to creative, uh, you know, holding on to your fundamentals and your convictions and shit. But I mean, someone's got to step in. You would think. Is nobody in your corner? People put money into this thing. Yeah, and time. Well, it's gonna make money, right? It's a writing credit for all those other people, producer credit for all those other people. I mean, I'm sure whatever whatever next list comes out, Billboard, if that's still a thing. It's going to be number one. Yeah. It's going to be number. It's going to be a number one. I've album. seen people posting stories of them listening to it since Friday. Yeah. yeah. So. She's a big, she's like a big deal in music right yeah. now, which is depressing. Right. Yep. And I was going to try and bookend that with like something positive about, <laughs> but it's just hard to do. It, it really, con- it is. Sometimes man. I just have a hard time accepting that this is where we are with like pop music. So the whole so, a so li- li- little bit of history. A little, little bit, bit of history. Of history. So, I'm a, I'm a hip-hop head. Yep. That's kind of what I grew up with. You know, 90s hip-hop, early 2000s, some of that's okay. Um, 
hip hop to me has always been a little bit like this might not be the best metaphor but I'm going to try to make it here. Kay. It's been a little bit like the WWE. Okay. Where everybody <laughs> That was literally the last thing yeah. I was going to guess you'd where say. Where everybody is like playing a character. Yeah. But at least there was some realness involved with right. like especially New York hip hop in the 90s. Mm -hmm. And then the West Coast came in and it's good stuff. Dr. Dre's great. It's Snoop like Dogg, backyard wrestling. Like those guys are actually getting tacks in their back. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And like, you know, a lot of wrestling is real. Those guys are actually doing it, and there's talent involved right. with it. Yep. But there's still this level of showmanship. This shit ain't real. Yeah. You know, there's somebody's always theatrics. beefing with somebody, and there's the theatrics. And now it seems like the new school of hip hop. I struggle to even call this hip hop. Right. Is like how wrestling is now. Yeah. There's still talent. They're athletic. But they can do it. It's mostly glitter. But it's mostly glitter. It's mostly glam. And it is all about the storylines. Yeah. It's all about the storylines. This. Or the beef. This. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Shots fired. She's dissing somebody. Somebody. Who I don't know. <laughs> this woman. Also, just side note. Shots fired. If she's dissing somebody in that track, it's a whole nother lane I didn't even take into consideration <laughs> yeah. for her direction. Right. Jesus. This woman is playing a character. Yeah. That's all she's doing. No authenticity. None. Yeah. Zero. And that is my biggest uh, biggest issue with this album. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, listen, I went through and I took notes for every single song on this thing. Yeah. And like first track, Shots Fired, Cheap Beat. I already told you what how I feel about it. Second song, Circles. I can't even think about what it sounds like, but I wrote down Annoying Hook. It's too low, fast. Low mix for the for like the actual yeah. low end side of it. It's like muddy. It's, right. it's not done well. Mm -hmm. Um the song with the baby, the third oh my track. God. That thing It's just, a piece of shit. It's a first draft yeah. that nobody did right. anything with. It's so bad. NBA playoffs, her ass is like a bubble. He <laughs> and that's how he ends the verse. He, well, he starts his verse off by just listing a bunch of names like yeah. it's Mambo number five. Yeah. Like, what the <laughs> fuck are we talking about here, dude? <laughs> Awful. Exactly. And the beat, like, it's supposed to be kind of dirty and dark and yeah. grimy, yeah. but it's just not good. Yeah. It sounds like a fucking little kid was like, I'll try. Yeah. Let me try this. Kids banging on fucking pails. So many, like, repeat things where I, I took notes about how it sounded like a Casio keyboard was, like, the <sighs> only sound bank for the beats on this thing. There's so Jeez. many repeat sounds yeah you know and yeah. there's dude people have collections of sounds on the internet that everybody uses they're pretty much free and she uses or whoever the producer was used the same fucking collection the whole time it's so boring Ugh. it's so and like it's not even if it was good and boring at least it'd be fun to party to but right. this is like fucking empty yeah empty shell shit yep. I want, agree more. <laughs> on track number four do it on the tip there's a line that says, oh, shit, I think I'm pregnant, but I still don't see no belly. <laughs> then she says, these bitches try to come at me way before they even ready. It's uh, just like oh, bad. Yeah. It's just real, yeah. real bad. It's great. I, I did enjoy the fifth track, that Sugar Baby song, because yeah. it sounds if it could have fit on the first one. Yeah, it, it's just the, whole, the, first one, the whole shit about I just do not understand. It's not up to me who's a symbol of female empowerment. Yeah. It's not up to me right. at all. But how can that be a thing if you're talking about if you want to be my boyfriend, you'll buy my whole cart? Right. What the fuck does that even yeah, mean? Yeah, I don't fucking know, dude. I don't know. I mean, you're empowered to tell him to buy your, I, I just Right. I, I mean, you, I don't get using it. your like taking back your sexuality and using it as like a tool. I get I okay. get that. I get that right. and I can get on board with I'm, that all day. Yeah, that's fine. <clears throat> but exploiting it is like kind of gross. Yeah. You know? It um, just goes back to your picking a lane thing. Yeah, I, right. It just seems so jumbled. Yeah. There's a line in that Sugar Baby song where she says, "Eat like a bad bitch, kale on my sandwich." <laughs> Which I really really enjoyed. <laughs> Yeah, and then there was another line that said, uh, "I want play." Uh, I, oh, I won't play for a plane ticket. I ain't coming over till I know how big your dick is. Yep. Which also made me laugh, and yep. I felt like it was goofy. And then that who is this little Dirk character? Uh, uh, somebody I hope I never hear again. Eat my coochie. Let's make a movie. I'm talking ASMR. Let me hear you chew it. Yep. 
The cool thing about that line is it totally flows and rhymes together as well. <laughs> what the fuck, it's, man? Yeah, it's just it's no so fucking. Involved. This song is gonna be about uh, you giving me cunnilingus. Yeah, but I okay. wanted to chew it. And yeah, like, that's just a fucking awful. That's visual. a shock value line. Yeah, that's all it is. Somebody go. Did you hear? Did you hear her say that? Bubble gum. Yeah. Chewed bubble gum. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, she did a song with SZA, which I wanted to like and didn't. I know. I like. I like SZA. So, yeah. relative to the album. Yeah. That one was okay. I mean, there there was quite a few features on this thing, and none of them stood out as good. Except for Big Sean. Big Sean was the only one that, in comparison to the rest of the album, yes. Was, and I like Big Sean a Me lot. Too. He's a super clever guy. Yeah. He's great. As a feature artist, he's fu- he always brings some fucking extra element to the track. Yep, I agree. But this one still even felt lacking from him. Yeah, I mean, you can only do so much with what you're given. Right. Yeah, I mean, there was a couple good lines from him. And I usually like two chain features. Wow. Yeah. Not good. Right. There, I just, yeah, I just felt like he, I couldn't even really, he felt like he wasn't enunciating. Yeah. Like he just didn't I even think he try. just wasn't even, yeah, he was like, this is stupid. I don't want to do this. So, uh, you skipped over Body, yeah, which yeah. is the most annoying song I've ever heard, and apparently that's the single. There's yeah. a video. I didn't know that. Yeah, I wrote down worst song of 2020? Question <laughs> mark. I mean, yeah. Bad production, awful moan sample, terrible hook, body yadi 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 yadi. Who let this happen? Who is that? Who, like, who is just like, yeah, just say the name of the song over and over and over again. Too fast, no rhythm. Just keep on doing that. There's production techniques to make it so you don't have to go adi 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 adi. You re, you do an echo. You make it dizzying. You make a fucking right. carousel out of it, and it's kind of a cool effect. Make it interesting. It's so cheap. Ugh. The production on this thing's so fucking cheap, dude. So bad. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I mean, it's just so much repeat shit. Yeah. By the time I got to track 14, I just wrote, stop trying to sing with rap aggression. So that was outside. Yeah. That's the one song I like. Right. And I, I just, I felt like that was her attempt at a pop crossover, which I can respect. Yeah. Because if that was a, a lane, once again, if that was a lane, right. there's a lane for it. Right. And she's doing something kind of unique where she's got that auto tune and she's got an aggression, a rap style aggression behind like the singing, quote yeah. unquote, but still not done well. In yeah. my opinion, yeah. um, Savage the remix. I kind of dug that yeah. one. Yeah, I like I like the original. You, oh, it's catchy. Yeah, it's catchy. It's super fuck. catchy. And so I was listening to it with my wife yesterday. She said Beyonce's first verse is actually a verse from the real song, and Beyonce's really? just doing Megan's verse. Huh. But then later on, Beyonce's doing her own stuff. So that's got to be the one where she's like kind of whispering the verse. Yeah. It sounds that's gang, such gang, a gang, fucking gang. cool vibe, I loved dude. It, yeah. Such a cool vibe. And there's this wicked cool thing that I I'm not, I dude, I don't like Beyonce. No. And like fucking everybody loves her. Yeah. You can get the fuck out right now. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Queen B, dude, you fuck you, dude. How dare you? And I, I fucking I just don't like her, you know? That's my opinion. Okay. And I want everyone to agree with me, but they don't. But she did something really cool uh, where, you know how, like, there's always the, like, hype thing where, like, someone will say a word and then they double track it or triple track it behind it? Okay. She did that for the rap verse, but instead of just, like, double tracking or triple tracking, she did three-part harmonies for all of them. Ah. And it, like, utilized her singing. Right. Super unique. I've never done it before. It fucking gave me a boner. Cause nope. I, I was nice. like, this is so cool. and so creative. Cool. Nice. Yeah. But also, why put... Just a remix of your most popular song on your new album. Yeah. Money grab. It's Yeah. Money grab. That would be like fucking Biggie on his second album just putting Juicy on it. Why didn't we do a remix of WAP? It's newer. Right. Come on. Yeah, if you're going to do it. Come on. Yeah. Who's directing this? Sh- who's fucking steering the ship here? It's a really good question. Uh, there was a song called Girls in the Hood and... This is just disrespectful, in my opinion. And I don't really want to say much more about it. It's disrespectful <laughs> to AIDS. Yeah, exactly. He got AIDS for this to happen? Exactly. Wow. No, it's garbage. Um, and then it closes out with a song called Don't Stop featuring Young Thug. And all I could say was, this is your closer? Is this over yet? This is, your, this is the way you're closing the album? Yeah. Come on. The best song on this album is Forgive Me by Chloe and Halle. <laughs> <laughs> because my Spotify would just automatically play that song when the album was over. Yeah. And I would be like, oh, thank God. And, dude, that, 
there was like there was a moment or two in Suga where that was kind of the the vibe that they strike on mm-hmm. was the vibe that she was kind of trying to go for. Okay, yeah. on a couple of the tracks, which I liked. Yeah, but Chloe and Howie do it better. Yeah, yeah, I love them. We should do it their album. Yeah, we should. <laughs> uh, I want to touch on one more thing. Okay, and it goes back to the thirteen-year-old virgin. Yep, there's a song called Intercourse, man, and they just repeat sexual intercourse like what is it it's health class in middle right. school yeah i know the terminology that I, means I i've know, had it i know exactly what to say i've had it right and it's featuring two people named popcon and mustard 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 that's where we are what is going on that's I'm su- well i'm surprised it's not lil mustard well I'm kind of glad it isn't because at least I can laugh at the title track when it fucking scrolls by on my Spotify. This is wh- that's where we are for I, names. Apparently. Do when do we go back to the start and just start letting people use the old names again? If we're out. When is hip hop just going to be my name's uh Megan Pete? Right. My name's Megan Pete. What's wrong with that? I don't see anything wrong with that. I don't know. I don't like it. It's very strange. Again, it goes back to this. They're just playing characters. Yeah. Especially now. Yep. They're just playing character. They're, play, they're playing hip hop. Yeah. And it sucks because there are people out there that are not playing hip hop. No, that are actually doing it. Actual MCs. Yeah. Um, it's, this, it's crazy to me that the realest, sorry, the realest hip hop artists right now were on Broadway. Yeah, right. You know? Oh, my God. Or like. The girl, the Cash Me Outside girl. Yeah. She's a millionaire off of her music and off of her music career. Oh, my God. And here's the thing. That's fine. Good for her for making money. Sure. But like the whole (laughs) storyline of how that came to fruition was it's not like she always rapped. Somebody at some point was like, hey, do you want to do this? Yeah. And she was like, yeah, let's capitalize on this. And now she's got somebody else's dream crazy it's fucking wild it's insanity <clears throat> i don't want this whole thing to be like we're coming off as music snobs because dude i like mindless yeah party yeah. dumb hip-hop you, i do if you keep listening to this show you are gonna hear us like some stuff that you would not expect i i wanted to come in today going this album was banging i know banger after banger after banger and i had high hopes after listening to sugar yeah thinking it was gonna be a fucking i just figured that I just figured the production. Yeah. At least. At least. Yeah. I saw Big Sean. I was like, oh, shit. Right. This could be good. Two maybe, chains. Maybe instead of paying uh, like the dollar amount for the production of 17 songs, cut that in half and yes. double the amount that you're paying the producer to get someone better in there. Yes, please. Or something. Yeah. I don't fucking know. Try again. Just real bad. If you, if you want a female rapper to listen to, go listen to Little Sims. That's yeah. How, just go listen to Little Sims. Yeah. Do that. Yeah, that's a great way to end it. Yeah. So we are we do something a little different for this one. Uh, most of the time you hear someone give a score from like 1 to 10 or like an A to F or 1 to 100. Yeah. And it makes sense logically when they do it. And it's Nin- a, 19. Yeah. <laughs> right. Sorry, we're not doing that, though. <laughs> yeah, we're not going to do that. We uh, – we're going to do a di- little bit of a different scale. Yes, we are. Uh, it's called, it's a controversial theory. It's called the pizza scale. <laughs> um, it's mostly just food in general. Uh, yeah. And so in my opinion, this thing, uh, you know, when you were younger and you'd party with your friends and you'd like get really drunk mm-hmm. or like really baked yeah. and you wanted to stop and get Taco Bell but one of your friends was like, no, we're going back to my house and I'm a really good cook and I'm going to make you something. Yeah. And you get all excited and you go, okay, cool. I, I'm putting my fucking hunger in your hands. And right now that's all I have. Yeah. This album is when you get back to that house and the food that they make you is like two day old DiGiorno's leftovers Ooh. that was overcooked and burnt. It's already dry. All they did was throw a little garlic salt on it. The crust is unchewable. It makes you feel dirty when you eat it. Uh-huh. And when you're done, for some reason, you smell bad. That's what this fucking album is this for me. This is fucking insane. Because <laughs> my pizza was going to be pretty much the fucking same. Ex- I swear to God, dude. 
Really? That nails it. We both really? are on the – Yes. Mine was going to be an overcooked frozen pizza because it's hard to fuck up pizza. Right. It's hard to have bad pizza. Mm-hmm. So I had to come up with a way – to have a fucked up pizza that didn't taste good. So it was yeah. an overcooked pizza, frozen, that was in the fridge. Yeah. And you had to eat it the next day. Mm-hmm. That was what it was. And it was burnt when they originally cooked it. And then for yeah. some reason, they put it in the microwave. Yes. And now not only is it fucking dry and unchewable, it's yeah. rubbery too. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. Well, I think that means that we're right. I, I so, dude. I mean, that we, is some crazy parallel thinking. Yeah, right there. just to be clear, we did not no. touch base beforehand on this. <laughs> Absolutely we, not. I mean, I almost went first too, and you would have been like, "What the fuck?" Right? Yeah. Well, I mean, that's that's the pizza scale for today. Yeah. For Megan yeah. the Stallion, mm-hmm. bad news. Yeah. It's bad news. It's not good. It's bad news. Yeah. Tune in next time for maybe something better. Yeah. Hopefully. Also, we'll be doing classic reviews. Yeah. I want to call them legacy reviews. Okay. Legacy yeah. reviews. Yep. Should we give them a little preview of what we're doing? Yeah. Next time around. So basically, sorry. Oh, basically, the it. way we're going to do it is we're going to do a new album, and then we're each going to give each other an album. Yep. And uh, I gave Sam something that I know we both love. It's Avenged Sevenfold, the white album. And Sam gave me... Fleetwood Mac. Yeah. Rumors. Rumors. And I have, we both just have strong opinions about each album. Yeah. And uh, it's co- it's going to be fun to expose you to things I feel like you haven't heard. Yes. And then hear your first take on it. Because yeah. obviously when you tell me to hear, it, listen to an album that you love, yeah. it's not like you can really go in with open ears it's, on it. It's risky. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that it will open up some cool avenues for the show. Definitely. Because if you tell me you don't like something. We can start to fight again. Yeah. <laughs> we, can, we can bring back the banter. Right. All right. Well, that was that was it. Yeah. So Wish we could have started with a better one. <laughs> I know. High hopes. Yeah. It's all good. Well, <clears throat> thanks for listening to Music Period. Mm. First episode. Yes, sir. Keep tuning in. Right. Uh, write in. Let us know what you want to hear us review. Yeah, definitely do that. All right. Find us on Instagram, Music Period Podcast. Email us, Music Period Podcast at gmail.com. Hey, there's that too. Like, share, review. Yeah, all those things. Don't go listen to this album. Don't do that. Well, do it. Yeah, do it. Yeah. See if you agree. Tell us if you agree. Yeah. Tell us what we got wrong. If anything, it's going to be a very quiet conversation. <laughs> all right. All right. See you next time. Peace.